my only advice is go and give this deck a go. All right, everybody. Today we are looking at what I think is going to be a bit of a banger of a deck. It's a bit of an experimental phase, but uh, in fact, I'm actually just going to tweak this based on this right now. On common wild cards, we've got plenty of. Uh, and it's a Tempo Flyers deck. So this is based around the Blood Letter of Aklazots, uh, which is three black and one uh, for a vampire a demon. It is a mythic, unfortunately. Uh, but I think it's the only mythic, uh, apart from one other sort of gimmick mythic we have in the deck. Uh, it's a 2-4 flyer, and if an opponent would lose life during their turn, they lose twice that much life instead. So what I've done with this is I tried to build a mono black version, and it wasn't very good. Um, but uh, what I have tried to come up with is a deck with lots of flyers, because my theory is if we have lots of flyers, we'll get in for lots of damage, and thus double damage is a very, very good effect to have. Now, I am only running three of these because I only have three. I would probably run four and ditch this card, uh, but because I haven't got four, we're running the high fey prankster as well. But, um, you know, maybe if, you have, if you're really flush for wild cards, then four of these is a better choice because it is kind of the, not the win con, um, but it shuts uh, certain games down quicker than, than they otherwise would. Um, as I said, we're kind of running lots and lots of flyers, so let me go through, uh, from the bottom up maybe, uh, how we're going to do damage with our blood letter. So, four of the Sleep Curse Fairy. So for those that didn't know, this is from Wilds of Eldraine. It's a 3-3 Fairy Wizard for one, uh, with flying and ward two, uh, but it enters the battlefield tap with three stun counters on it, and it has one and a blue to untap it. So one and a blue to untap it will just remove a stun counter, if it still has stun counters on it. Um, but once all the stun counters are gone, untapping this can form as a nice little, basically gives it vigilance for two sort of <coughs> um, effect. Uh, obviously, with the blood letter, what we need to try and do is get enough high power flyers down before turn four when we're playing this, which is why I think it pairs super nicely with the Sleep Cursed Fairy, because this, even if we don't pay the two ever, is going to keep, if as long as we play it on turn one, it's going to remove those three stun counters. Um, itself uh, by the time we play this on turn five uh, or four, whenever we, whenever we choose to play it. So I just think that these pair super nicely because if this is basically a 6-3 with the Blood Letter of Aklazots down and it has Ward 2 and we have ways to buff it in the deck, uh, one of which being we have got four of the new Spyglass Siren in the deck, which is a 1-1 one, one Siren Pirate for blue. It has flying, uh, as I said, most of our creatures will in this deck. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a map token. Now, map tokens, for those of you who haven't seen them yet, uh, is a one-costing artifact that we can sack uh, only as a sorcery, but we reveal the top card of our library and put it into our hand if it's a land. Otherwise, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on this creature, then put the card back or put it into your graveyard. So, uh, map tokens are not new. Exploring isn't a new feature, a new keyword. It has been in Magic the Gathering in the past. The main thing I can remember is called like Jade Light Explorer or something, which was like a 2-1 costing uh, Merfolk that cost three and you explored twice when it came in and it was, it was really strong. Um, exploring is actually, it, I, I don't know how you would evaluate it in your head, but you know, from my uh, experience, I know it's really good, <laughs> right? And there's something that I, I don't know if it sounds brilliant, but it is a really, really strong effect. Uh, so put that card into your hand if it's a land. So it, it saves you top decking lands or it gives you lower chance to top deck lands because if there is a land, you'll already have drawn it using this effect. And if it isn't, it basically gives you surveil and it buffs the creature. So it's a really nice effect. I think that's slightly odd about it is you do have to pick the creature uh, to put the counter on. So if you don't have a creature, um, then you can't use your explore. So, you know, that's kind of the drawback of the map tokens um, because it needs to have a target creature to be able to explore. But, um, you know, in this deck, that's not really an issue. So the beauty with this is we can explore onto our Sleep Curse Fairy, meaning that that counter, if we get one, is on a Ward 2 creature, so it's gonna uh, be more effective. Also, the counter basically counts as two damage if we have our Blood Letter out. So this is gonna, you know, basically be a, a creature that can shut down the opponent on its own, uh, is the kind of idea. We're running a couple of one drops here, which I'll just cover briefly, which is cut down and shore up. Shore up is target creature you control gets plus one, plus one against hex brief until end of turn, and you untap it. Uh, and then two have cut down. Um, the reason we're running kind of a split between the two is that I'm running the Halo Forager, 
Uh, Halo Forager is a 3-1 Fairy Rogue that costs 3, and when it enters the battlefield you can pay X. When you do, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with money value X from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. So we can pick the one that will be most beneficial to us. If we want a bit of extra damage and to give our creature vigilance for the turn, shore up when we play the Forager. Uh, or, I sort of, sorry, it doesn't really give it vigilance because typically... I just mean like we'll have attacked, we then play the Forager, we can untap the creature we attacked with, or we can cast, cut down or recast it uh, using Halo Forager as well. So um, this is primarily there as a 3-1 flyer because it's basically a 6-1 flyer with the Blood Letter, but being able to flash back these uh, instants is very nice for us. Um, we're also running four go for the throats because if we ever get to five mana, then Halo Forager can kill uh, something, reflashing this back from our graveyard. Uh, we're running three of Malcolm the Alluring the Scoundrel. Again, I think I only have three, yep, otherwise I'd probably run four and ditch this copy of Ibira. Malcolm is a really strong card. This is a 2-1 Legendary Siren Pirate with Flash and Flying. Uh, when it deals combat after play, you put a Chorus Counter on it. Draw a card, then discard a card. If there are four more Chorus Counters on Malcolm, you may cast a discarded card without paying its mana cost. Now, obviously, trying to get to four counters on this and then get something to play in for free is not really the goal of the deck because even if we get our top end they only cost four so it's it's not a wonderful thing to get for free but the fact that it has flash and flying and it gives us that ability to cycle through stuff by drawing and then discarding uh, means we can always find the answers or the threats that we need being that whether that's go for the throat it can help us find our blood letters um, it could find us a shore up if we're worried about um, tag removal on our creatures it could help us find a confounding riddle uh, if we're worried about board wipes or other very expensive cards our opponent might be casting so you know it just gives us that flexibility in a kind of nimble tempo deck that this is to find the right cards for the right games and that's why I think this is a really good card the fact that it has flash and flying obviously means that it's gonna pretty much connect once unless our opponent has instant speed removal and we, and we don't have shore up or they have a, a flying or reach blocker so very nice card. Uh, we're also running three of the Deep Cavern Bat, which you'll be glad to hear is an uncommon. Uh, this is one and a black for a flying lifelink 1-1. One, one. Uh, but when it enters the battlefield, we look at target opponent's hand, we may exile a non-land card from it until Deep Cavern Bat leaves the battlefield. This is actually a really strong effect, right? Because if our, our goal here is what we're looking for is things that are going to disrupt us winning the game, which would typically be uh, removal if we're trying to play our Aklazots, especially board wipes, because we do need to get a certain uh, number of creatures onto the board in order for Aklazots to be able to shut the game down or just to win it through other methods. Um, but if we do pick removal with this, they basically force to use the removal on the bat, which you know stops them using it and our other more key creatures that we have in the deck, which I'll go through in a second. So it's kind of like search your opponent's hand for removal if they have it or something better if they don't that's kind of how i would look at this effect uh, and not to mention it has lifelink which can be good against the mono red matchups which is still quite prevalent in alchemy uh, and it's a flyer so it's going to get in you know allow us to do more damage with aklazots against mono red we can use map tokens on the deep cavern bat so i would say if you've got the siren and you're against mono red and you've got a bat it's worth holding onto those map tokens targeting the bat just to sort of double that lifelink potential that you have uh, Abira the Dreaming Duelist. The reason this was in the deck originally is because we are running a few fairies, although we're only actually running seven um, in addition. Uh, in this, this, no, that's a god. Oh, eight, sorry. In addition to Abira. So she's not actually that great in the deck. The fairy synergy I've sort of slimmed down now that I've added other flyers into the deck. Hence why I would run an, a fourth Malcolm, to be honest, because it's a more useful card in the deck. But it has a two, it's a 2-2, two -two. it has flash and flying, and it is legendary, so running one isn't the end of the world. And it can give us a few extra little points of damage um, against our opponent, not to mention that because it causes loss of life, Aklazots can double the damage that we're doing with Elvira as well. So it's okay in the deck, it's not bad, uh, but I do think Malcolm's slightly better because the card filtering is really nice. Uh, we're running two of the new Confounding Riddle, which is a new uncommon counter spell. Um, the reason being, uh, the counter spells are still not that great in um, in uh, Alchemy or in Standard at the moment. But the reason that, that we're running this one is it's basically a counter anything particularly nasty for three, uh, kind of like a counter spell. But it also has the flexibility to let us look at the top four cards um, and put one into our hand so if we have our halo forager um it you know i can flash this back and it'd be useful the problem with running a hard counter um in the deck for three is that you know i have never got any use flashing that back with halo forager all i can do is counter 
my own Halo Forager, so not that helpful. So, you know, that's what, because this doesn't have flash, the counter can never be useful. So that's why I wanted a counter that has a secondary function, and I think this one is actually reasonably good, because the counter target spell on this controller page 4 is very strong, um, but also looking at the top four and putting the rest in our graveyard, we could even put other cards into our graveyard, sort of other instants that we can then flash back with another Halo Forager. Um, so there are some sort of interesting things that we could do with this card, but in worst case, it's just a bit more filtering for us to help find that blood letters, uh, all the other sort of recipe items that we need. Now, one of the sort of superstars of the deck and the main things that's making this deck viable is the Kite Sail Larcenist, which is two and a blue for a two, three uh, human pirate with flying and ward one. Note that because this has ward one and this has ward two, we are a pretty hard to remove deck. Like a lot of our creatures have ward, and that is why, again, I'm saying, Border act to some of the main threats because if our opponent's bothering paying all the wards for the sleep curse fairies and the last nests, they're probably <laughs> probably behind because it costs them a lot to remove these creatures. Uh, the last nest has a bit of an odd effect, which is when it enters the battlefield for each player, so for us as well, choose up to one target artifact or creature that player controls. For as long as the last nest remains on the battlefield, the chosen permanents become treasure artifacts. So it's kind of like the Vraska effect, uh, the Planeswalker from the previous, well, a lot of sets ago now. Basically turns something into a treasure, so it removes all of its abilities, and it can't, you know, so this is basically a removal spell for creatures. Um, but also it's got like a bit of an interesting little effect that we can turn our own artifacts into treasures. So if, for example, the map tokens from the Siren, if it isn't being used for us as a map token or we're short on land, we can turn that map into a treasure and pay it and then play the Aklazots, for example. So it has got a little bit of an extra utility, but basically having a flying Brutal Cathar, that's a 2-3 with Ward 1, uh, which is basically what this is because it removes their creature, oh, it gives them a one treasure for it, so it's, you know, not quite equal, but this is a darn good card. This is a really darn good card. So that's why with the two cut downs, four going for the throats, and the three last mists, we really do have a good removal package in this deck. Now, again, I'd probably run a fourth one of this uh, if I had it, but I'm running three for now because, you know, wild cards are, uh, are money. So, uh, Halo Forager, I sort of covered. Uh, we are running one of the Oja Pack, Pack Patek, sounds like a wacky racer's name to me, the Deepest Epoch, which is a four costing, four three legendary creature god. We're flying. Whenever you cast an instant spell from your hand, it begins rebound. So, rebound meaning that at the beginning of our next upkeep, we can pay, play it again without paying its mana cost. Um, you know, all of our spells would benefit from being played again, which is nice. They're all instants um, because, you know, we, we're sort of working around this flash model anyway. That's why I think it's got a bit of um, synergy in the deck. And also, when it dies, uh, we can return it tapped and transformed under our control, which basically means after three turns, we can play it back as a creature again. So it's a bit of like a uh, sustainable grindy top end for us in case we're finding that there's like a really slow board white heavy deck that we're facing so i think it's actually an interesting one of um and i probably would uh, trade out the high fade prankster for a fourth aklazots rather than this but the high fade prankster is in there because i want to see if this card can be good and if it can be good in any deck i think this is the deck because this is two a blue and a black for a rare one for flying death touch now the death touch can be something a little bit handy in this deck if we're getting flattened by big creatures uh, which there obviously are around in this set. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you choose one. Perpetually exchange target creature's base power with another target creature's base power. This is actually... The reason I think it could be an interesting inclusion in this deck is we're running the Spyglass Siren, which has one power. The Deep Cavern Bats, which have one power. And then a couple... or uh, well, quite a few creatures that have two power. So quite low power creatures. So if our opponent has anything high power, even like a Shelly, uh, this effect is going to make quite a big difference to the board. Um, and then it's kind of got a fallback of make itself a 4-1. And a 4-1 flyer, uh, when you have Aklazots as well, is not really to be sniffed at. So that's why we're giving it a go in this deck. Uh, I have managed to get three of the new Rest Restless Reef Land as well, which is pay four to turn this into a 4-4 blue and black shark death touch, which then mills. So we can mill ourselves to look for instance to put into our graveyard to flush back a forager. Uh, and it's a 4-4 creature for when we're struggling for creatures. So... Uh, all of our creatures, apart from this land, are flying, uh, and then we're going to beat them down with Aquazots. That's the idea. Uh, we're only running 24 lands because of our top end is quite low, and we've got a lot of filtering. So that's the idea. Let's have some games. See how we get on. All right. Just recorded a nice game and then realised the uh, audio didn't work, but we are currently 1-0. <coughs> we beat a Mardu Artifact stack. So uh, let's see how we get on this time. On the draw... 
but we've got a nice one, two, three, four curve. Um, and if we don't hit our lands, we can map token. So I think this is a pretty good hand. Ooh, mono red. A little less fun, but... Being on the draw against this, don't think we'll block because this is a monstrous rage, probably regardless of whether we block or not. And then we're only saving one damage because it's got trample. Um, let's use this bat, see if we can find anything good to remove. Hopefully no shock, because they'll just shock the bat. At least we get to see what they've got, I suppose. Okay, they've got a shock. What you got, though? Okay. So, being able to larcenist this would be amazing, because it's their only creature, which is all their power right now. So, larcenist would be ideal. Hopefully we'll get a land... Okay, they got another creature anyway, which is slightly more threatening. Nice. Okay, we're larcenous. Uh, do we want to turn this into a treasure? Nah. Let's turn this into a treasure, shall we? And then I think we will block, even though we know that they can mark, they can melt this through. Costing them that and that just to get an Ember Coiler back will be well worth it. It'd be even better if we could hold open Riddle, but sadly we can't. See, they don't want a Witch's Mark, because this has already got a monster token on it. Okay, maybe they do. Because they had a land here, yeah, fair enough. Now they can't use the Melt through, so this is a dead turn. Oh, they can. They can sack their Ember Coiler, but then, then yeah. Less less helpful for them in the long run than we kill both these for actually this will be a three for one if they do that. Which does seem like they're doing. Yeah, unless they've got another monstrous rage, I suppose. Then it just trades a two for one. God this ward is a bit brutal on this. This seems like a brilliant card in my in my testing. Okay, they have got a rage. That's good though. That's two down, right? So there's probably no more coming. They only looked at twelve cards. Uh, we'll keep this in the in the tank for now. There we go. We did find a land, which is good. Put this on blue. Uh, yeah, well, attack. Why not? I think we'll probably be using Riddle to counter something here. That looks like a good counter target. And then, what instants and sorceries have we got? Melt through. That's nice. So we can do the. Yeah. Let's do this and melt through, get rid of the Ember Coiler. It's 
while we can. I think that puts us on the front foot. They can melt through this, but meh, we've got some more gas in our hand. I've even drawn my one-off version of this. Okay. I think I'll block. It's a bit of a weird block, but knowing that they can kill this forager anyway. I always thought it was forager. I should have a halo forager. Worst case is this dies and turns into a nice land for us, so. Hope that they don't keep finding more burn. It's a possibility. We haven't actually got any instance of sorceries in our hand, so this is actually better for us as a land at the moment. It's only things from your hand, right? So the things that we copy with Forager don't get copied. Gosh, they have got lots of burn. So we could do Rally, Lightning Strike, Witch's Mark. Thinking what we can cast a Forager. Should do uh, Witch's Mark. That's not going to be that useful in this game. So, hold on. Seven, eight, yeah, so. If we play Aklazots next turn, we've easily got on, we've easily got lethal, so we just got to hope they can't do too damage to our face, really. They've got to have some more land, right? <laughs> they've gone 17 cards and only have three lands. Okay, there's one. Let's hope that last one isn't too damaged to face. It isn't. GG. Nice. Okay. Ooh, very close number to us. Let's say it's a good challenge for the deck. Good hand. We've got two Malcolms, but we can always discard one to the other. And, you know, they normally kill it anyway because it's such a good card. These we might ditch. It's just nice that they've got Flash and Flying and cost two, basically, but... Not that much synergy, we're not a really fairy heavy deck, but we'll see. With the cut down and with these, yeah. Quite liking our odds, but we'll see. We are on the draw, so. Black, white, interesting. Interesting. Some kind of ring, porca important deck. Okay. Esper. And they held open mana, so probably did removal in their hand. Okay, they can have a fire for now. Let's get this in now. Ooh, that could be helpful. 
Given that we've got protection, I think I can throw away my other Malcolm. Okay, can't stop that. Let's get Obira in. Okay, we'll obviously just be holding. This has to do when it does combat damage, yeah. Okay. But we could take two stun counters off this if they have nothing else. Okay. We probably want to remove that. As it's a good blocker. Protect that. Fine. Um, they're probably running Sunfall in this kind of horrible deck, which probably makes untapping this the best move. discard this. Are there any instants or sorceries that we want? Shore up isn't that helpful. Let's discard this. Because this land is going to be good. Hope they don't find like the extra turn card or whatever. Okay. That's not great, but... I wonder if they've got flat removal for this. Or a counter. Yeah, a counter spell, okay. One more chorus card, right? Then we can play it without paying its mana cost. Not that that's particularly what we've got this in the deck for. I suspect we're going to see some fall or similar. Problem is they're digging a deep way through their deck with this ring, and they to be fair, they probably need to play another ring, right? What they got? Four, seven, plus maybe one more. Probably eight mana to play with, plus any of the um, what are they called? Moxes that they draw. So maybe eight, nine. Did he find another ring? Because that's clearly what they were trying to do with this first. Okay, they did get one mox. Kaya? Okay, they've got a black lotus as well. I'm gonna say, if that's out of mana, we win, but. Mm. Interesting that they'd give us a full hand. Because they're taking four damage at the start of their next turn. Okay. So we've got seven damage here, so even if they cut down one of these two, yeah, they'll probably still die to the ring. We have got another blood letter, even though they made a shuffle. Sweet. Nice win. Okay. <laughs> Squirrely Dave. Nice 74%. It just means, all that means is if we lose, we get absolutely smashed with uh, with rating loss. Yeah, a nice big deck for Squirrelly Dave. So 
but I think we will be keeping and playing the shores first because getting these in in turn one is so valuable. Even though we've got this reef up, have we crashed? We've crashed. Just load him back in. Uh, honestly, the crashes are so bad. And here we are. Okay. Let's just play this and play the other one of these. I thought it was going to crash again then. It had like a little stutter as I played that fairy. So we're looking at Abzan. Abzan pigs. Okie doke. Uh, I guess we just pass. I don't think we want to play the last sinister on this. Don't really want to ramp Abzan. Now this thing is useless anyway. Uh, what? Not sure what that thing's doing, but I think we'll just untap this and attack. So what have we got? Eight? We're only one off of off of lethal in our hand. Okay, another little pig. Maybe I should have kept the forager for a uh, cut down. So do we do this and just get them to one? Yeah, because even if we get sunfall, then we've still got a pretty decent hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was enough. Sweet. Okay. This is going pretty well so far. It feels like it reacts well to a lot of decks. I really like having a tempo deck that can have a nice, like, 10 one drops in it, or however many we've got. It feels really good in the current alchemy meta. Playing this one over this one because we've already got three lands, and getting this untapped is going to be our key to victory. We have already got the Aklazots. Uh, I think we always throw this when we're not sure, to be honest. Let's play this, and then we'll take it easy. We won't map token now. Holding this is probably good. Not that they can touch the, this one. Um, okay. Yeah, fine. Get in for one. Looks like we're playing against pigs again. Could be black white, or it could be Abzan. We've got no artifacts or enchantments for them to remove, but march toward perfection. You gonna attack? You can attack. Okay. So at least we've got five in the air now. That this the map tokens putting counters on this man with the ward two and flying. That is so brutal. Especially when you've got your cheeky one of these in case they do have anything that can get rid of this ever. What is this? Sack of land, two basics, put them on who control Okay. I didn't even I didn't even recognise this card. But because it's basics, I guess it's struggled a little bit. Fine. Ah, blue, so we can't play Aklazots. Too many uh, islands, maybe. I'll we'll have to check the numbers after this. I'll throw one of these away. Kind of giving away our game plan a bit, but I don't think it matters too much in this deck. So we've got seven damage, okay. Eight, if we have this available. 
And the black clown means easy win. Okay, fine. Not sure why you picked that thing. Don't attack. That's a bad idea. Yeah, okay. Nice. Good game. Even with the shore up available, not that we're anywhere near needing it, but that was another solid win. I mean, the opponent's deck was a bit weird, jank, but nice to clean those up easily. All right, I checked the number of islands, and I think we need we need the ones we've got because we are running a load of one drop blues, and there's only five islands in the deck, so I think it's okay. But obviously, there has to be some drawback. Of, uh, oh my god, we crashed again. Yeah, as I was saying, there has to be some drawback to running Aklazots in a blue deck, and that, that's it. I mean, it is, um, thankfully, three black and a, a colourless. If it was four black, it would probably be unplayable for us in this, but we can get away with it, so we do. Uh, well, let's play both of these. Why not? And then we can hold this next turn. I don't think we need the map token just yet. Ooh. Okay, flying vigilance. We don't really want them to get flying. Uh, yeah, we'll hold the riddle. Not sure what exactly the stack is, but okay. We will get rid of that. Not that they can even crew it, but... And black, no point playing this this turn. Okay. I wonder if they're running sunfalls, because if so, that is our negative. Given that they're a creature deck, it's unlikely. Okay, that's not great for us. Death Touch, Menace, Lifelink. Don't do that. Why do people always do it? I don't think that they play against this card enough, to be honest. Even if they are running some for it's too late now. <laughs> There's too much, too much power on this board. Even if they get rid of this, that's fine. We've got another one. And we still we got yeah, we got ten here. I suppose we need more than ten, because this is gonna be a four four. Yeah. Now it's flying as well, but this is easily victory. Sweet. Nice. Broken the top 500, hopefully, with that game. Yep. Okay. Got a nice little fairy. This, I'm just enjoying this playing decks that always have opening hands, man, because it's so low curve. I was trying to make it like a big rampy dinosaur thing, and a number of games that you just die to mono red on the draw, or the uh, Legends Creatures deck, which we haven't played against yet, but uh, losing to that just sucks so bad. That's why we're running the Riddle at all, because if you can deny them their Joda, that's so good. Mono Green. Don't see much of that around here. Let's deny them this thing. I don't want to see what big wardy dinosaurs they have.
It also means we're holding shore up. Not that mono green is going to do anything to this. It could have destroy creature of flying. Okay. Uh, I haven't really played a lot with this, but we don't want the, we don't want anything funky like that happening. We've got to deploy a little more power to the board. We're not going to win with just a 3-3. These green decks can be can be bad news for us. So let's get let's get the power down. Put the two turn seven ten yeah two turn clock on. Once we end up with this, we're good. No matter pretty much no matter how much they go off with this. Okay, they haven't gone anywhere with it. What are you holding? <laughs> That sucks for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks for you. I mean, we're nice for trying green, but I don't think green is a thing. If it was, I would be doing it. Okay. Jim M. 1381. I'm trying to break into the top 1200, eh? Okay, no one drop for the first time. Uh... What's the chance of us drawing a third Dark Slick Shores? I say that because if we draw a third one, it will end up coming in tapped, and I'll regret not just playing these out, but odds are low. Okay, this is mono red. Looks like it. Mm, yeah, we'll get straight in there. No point giving this uh, infantry a chance to do anything. Are they, they going to shock my Overhira with their, with their treasure? No way. Come on, you're not doing that. Everyone thinks they can get their thing back. That's why they don't do it. They all see the dream. You can kill the Lousiness with a lightning strike. Get your thing back. Ah, oh, man. That's a bit rough. Okay, let's see what you've got in there. Are you going to show me? Nice. Took a double monstrous rage. We've got to get rid of one of these. This thing's going to hit us like an absolute truck because we can't get rid of it. But no point blocking it when it's got trample. It's going to crack us for 10, this thing. At least it can't do it twice now. Yeah, and we can remove that thing. So what have we got? Five damage. It's only a three turn clock. The good news is this thing has life ring. So we take ten. Even if they have another Monstrous Rage, we're going to gain one back. So they need a Monstrous Rage plus something else, and we know one of their cards is a Mountain. Uh, yeah. They lose one extra life for a Fairy. Let's just try and race this down. So six, they need to do five damage with two cards. Not unreasonable. That's only one damage. Because we've got we've got our eight damage here. They can't have another monstrous rage, can they? Can they? A third one in the top seven? And no, no, oh, they could have the club. I was thinking nothing does four to face. Yeah, the thing that lets you sack something, the club does. Good game. Good game. Just about got there. Just about got there. Nice.
I mean, we do have cut downs, so we could have a better draw against that dragon engine. I'm not worried about that as a weakness, but uh, I got a bit hairy for a second. Okay. Lone Wolf. Mm, no one drop again, and we're on the draw. I don't think we want a mulligan, though, because we have got two, two drops and two lands. You know, there are 10 one drops to, for us to draw, right? No, 12 one drops. Yeah, 12 one drops for us to draw. Although two of them are shore up, so. Yeah, I think we keep. It's just against the mono red, it could be slightly hairy with this. They've mulliganed, so I feel better about keeping them now. They mulliganed, right? No, they didn't. Or maybe they did and we don't see yet. Okay, they did. Black green. Probably got the one ring in it then. Oh, it's that shit. Ah, that's the that's actually the worst. This toxic shit, man. These fairies, yeah, they're not doing it for me. I think we let this hit, and we do Malcolm because I would like to find more land. Then I can use this and uh, get rid of this without targeting it. They got a counter? Yeah, okay. At least we can ditch this safely. Even if we don't have a another land, which is a bit shit as well. We've had three draws and no lands. Okay. Okay, okay. Bring the ending. Fuck, man, still no land. Are you gonna bring another ending on this? Why do you care about that? That's a bad play. Ay, ay, ay. If it was me, I would only counter stuff that would stop this hitting. These, they're not going to do that for ages. I'm just playing it because i got nothing else to do. Don't do me like this game. Don't make me lose this perfect streak to toxic. with Just because just of the land. Thankfully, they mulliganed, right? So they're only on two cards. They're going to spend a whole turn getting rid of this for no reason whatsoever. There, finally. Hey, I have a treasure. Always, always gets me that you can turn your own stuff into treasures and like... I know you can do it, but I always forget that that's the ordering of like what it's going to make you choose. So they have got a restless cottage that we need to be a little bit careful of. They can't actually power it up again. Bring the ending, anoint with affliction, we can flash back with our foragers. I'm just looking if there's anything good for the foragers to do. I think we're just going to play the most three ones that we can double with Aklazots, to be honest. Getting rid of Malcolm. Uh, it's gonna give them some, yeah. Oops, didn't mean to click that. So if we put Aklazots in, we'll do 10 damage. Maybe we can keep our perfect record going. 
I don't even want any play to lose with this deck because it's too damn good. It's too damn good. Yeah, you're soon going to give up thinking you're the beatdown if your plan is to win the Restless Cottage. Nice. Aqua's Ox it is. Even with two lands for the first, like, 11 cards, we might come through this. They can gain six life. That isn't going to save them. They're taking 12 next turn. Wait. Seven. <laughs> They're taking 14 next turn. <laughs> yeah, that was solid. Solid maths. Okay. No, they're not. That did proliferate as well. So they can they can live this time. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Let's swing. Do we, we just hold, because we can riddle anything that's really bad for us, or we can go for the three at the cottage. Not that they'll cottage, because then they know they lose, right? I think we just, yeah, this is definitely just a hold. I'm not sure what they could have that would finish it for us. We have any counter, if it's going to stop us winning, I was going to say. That technically doesn't stop us winning. Oh, it does, because they can then eat the food. So let's counter that. They can't pay four, right? No, they can only pay three. Well done, confounding riddle. Now you've got to kill both creatures with three, which only has one black in it. Or you kill this one. No, this one and eat this. So I guess cut down, eat this. No. Okay. Don't know how we did it, but we've come through that one as well. Sweet, all right. Gunnet 2-2, two, 2-2. Two, two, two. Played against this player a little bit. They've been playing... I can't remember what this is. This is like a, probably a no-keep. I don't find these very often with this. But we do need something. I don't mind mulliganing on the draw. Uh, especially not against mono red. Okay, not mono red, red white. Clay fire bricks. It's another maybe Nahiri type deck. I've been working on my own red white deck that got me like a lot of the way into Mythic, to be honest. Uh, not the Discover one, one to do with uh, artifacts, but not with the Nahiri's thing. It actually uses a lot of these, and I played it against this player, so I feel like they've ripped me off, but maybe not. Okay, we can get rid of the, the forge. Which maybe I'll do. I'll not get rid of, but... Okay, we'll get rid of this one. Just because there's no instance of sorceries around right now, and I need immediate value for something to be worth it. They could be running Sunfall, and we could have just ramped them into it, but it's not the end of the world for us to be Sunfalled right now. We've got a good next turn. That's often what I'm thinking playing against things like board wipes. Like, have I got a good next turn if a board wipe happens? Right now, we can hold Riddle and Abira, play our Restless Reef, and be quite happy. Not happy, but as happy as you can be playing a creature deck and getting board wiped. I'd be even happier if they sunfall next turn. Okay, there goes Malcolm. Okay, no, they're going to take the last of this. Interesting. So they get their forge back. Keeping the Malcolm is probably good. Okay, we don't keep the Malcolm. <laughs> we keep nothing. Yeah, that was actually worse than I imagined. It cost basically like a sun for, I suppose. It just cost them a bit more. 
This forge is gonna be a pain though. We need more last lists. What's happening now? Maybe they crashed. No. Oh. Just having a little toilet break. So we'll play this on black, we'll play Aklazots, and then we'll hope that they don't have Sunfall. They can't actually afford Sunfall right now. I think, sadly, we might let Obira go. Interesting that they thought about something. Maybe that means they've got another saw blades that they're holding for Aklazots. Well, we've got another counter, so. As long as there's no sun falls, what's this thing? Okay, it's that thing, yeah. Nice with this. So, can you tap that now? No. Can't afford to tap that now. But it would give it plus 4 plus 0. Oh. So next turn, that's 9 damage, plus more if they've got an enchantment. Okay, we can attack. Get in for 8. Counter that. And we might have to go for the throat on the forge token. Shit. And we won't go for the throat on it now. I think that could be the end of us, unfortunately. How much does this do? Four. Uh, with one life, one life off of killing them. Shit. Good game. This is basically the deck I was working on. Very close. Very close. This was the game in Mulligan, right? Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Well, I think the deck speaks for itself, really. What an absolute banger, as you saw on the video. We did lose one, and that was where we had the Mulligan and we're on the draw. Uh, but 9 and 1, 90% win rate in only 47 minutes. I mean, this deck is going places. I mean, even, yeah, in less than an hour, it's gotten me from 637 up to 436 in Mythic. Uh, having a 90% win rate, best of 1, in, like, reasonably high Mythic, in the top half of the Mythic numbers anyway, uh, is, is, is not to be sniffed at. My only advice is go and give this deck a go.